My name is Barbara Fugate. I was born in Benicia, November 4, 1927, and have lived here all of my life. My father was a great-grandnephew of Major Stephen Cooper, the first alcalde of Benicia, and I live in a house built by Captain Edward von Pfister in 1850. World War II seems to dominate my early memories of Benicia. My dad, Leslie Cooper, worked for the Southern Pacific Railroad out of Port Costa, as did fellow Benicians Bill Danke and Sam Harrison, among others. Few Benicians had automobiles, and these SP employees commuted to work on their boats. To take advantage of tidal conditions, my father built a wharf extending from the caves at the end of West G Street out some distance to where there was always sufficient depth to accommodate water traffic. In peacetime, our family enjoyed using the boat for fishing and trips to the Delta during duck hunting season. However, at the start of World War II, the Coast Guard feared an invasion by Japanese submarines and ordered that all small craft on inland waterways be beached lest they interfere with possible military operations. My father had to buy a 1930-something Ford, the first family car I can remember, although there were the dismembered remains of something called a Stevens in the barn behind our home. After Pearl Harbor, Benicia went into full wartime mode. For a time, we had blackout curtains on our windows and we had air raid wardens. Everything was rationed, gas, meat, shoes, and so forth. My mom had big books of ration stamps she carefully guarded. Many of our young men entered military service per the 1945 Benicia High School honor roll. Sam and Anna Harrison's son John joined the Navy and became one of our first to be lost in action. We even had a ground observer corps to report the movement of aircraft over our vital war industries. Benicia's outpost was on the Scotty Glass Duck Club property off what is now Highway 680. Scotty had a tall tower behind his home with a, an unobstructed view of the heavens in all directions, and this was manned by volunteers 24-7. I was a senior Girl Scout, and we were on duty every Saturday from dawn to sunset, phoning in descriptions of the number of planes we saw, where they were coming from, and where headed. Hopefully none of the flyers we reported had feathers. The Ground Observer Corps was reactivated during the Korean police action, and the post was located on one of the Housing Authority's tall buildings on Dalton Manor. There was a great influx of people anxious to work in the war effort, but scant offerings in the way of housing or other necessities. Dalton Manor, Grant Circle, and Francesca Terrace sprang up and provided some housing relief later followed by permanent single-family homes in West Manor and the Highland subdivisions. Many Benicia High students were employed at Benicia Arsenal during their summer vacations. I was 16 in 1944 and spent that summer and the next working in Storage Division's locator office. Approximately 250 Italian POWs were billeted in the Arsenal and they happily joined in our workforce. They were very popular and had passes to go into town and were invited into many Benicia homes. Friendships continued even after they returned to their own country. In August of 1945, we received word the war had ended and the entire Arsenal workforce emptied into the streets in celebration. These are but a few of my memories of Benicia. They show a small city already steeped in history being called upon to make its unique contribution to protect and defend our great nation. And we done good 